Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. Remember that one Vanguard video I put up where I took the Dragonic Vanguard support that was coming up, made proxies of them, and then broke the stuff down into things I liked and didn't like, as well as some other things you can do with the deck? Well, we're doing that again, except it's going to be with Neo Nectar and the new Bloom support coming up in the Nation Zoo Booster. Set is due for release very soon. It comes out in January 28th, but I'm pretty certain Ideal Elite is going to have their pre-orders up within the next week or so. And uh, people are going to be jumping on that, but the question is, what do you need from that set? Absolutely mandatorily. As well as, what do you need from stuff that's already out now? Well, I got you covered. So we're going to break down this deck and the things you can do with it, keep them back in your mind. And uh, also weep as you realize just how much of a price tag this is going to carry, what with this being a thing. And yeah, we'll just go from there. So uh, strap yourselves in, guys. It's going to be a long video, I'm sure of it. So let's get started with the Forerunner. So it, first, when I was playing with this deck, I was running the Elmi because up until this point, this has been the best starter the clan has, or rather this deck has. Oz was terrible. The Trial Deck starter from, what was it? The, with the Asha reprint, that thing. Yeah, the one that where you rest it. It was only good for the Luke build, but that build's terrible now, so that's no good. And the Azu retrain in set is also not really that good either. Like, you're really going to use its skill to count us one, throw into the soul, and draw a card. And the reason why this isn't very good either is because she's GB locked. And when you've got Overlord as the best deck in the format, chances are this thing is going to die before you even get the stride. Between Gatling Claw Dragon and the Destiny, this thing is not living. So, as a result, Japanese players have started to run the Great Three Searcher from, what is it, Blue Storm Armada, the set that Musketeers debuted in, which is Brock and Laney, Musketeer Kyra. I actually don't have one on me because I got rid of my Musketeer deck a year and a half ago, so it's on order, but it's the kind of us one, look into the soul, search top five cards for your deck, and if there's a Great Three Neo Nectar from among them, add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck, and that's actually pretty useful. So, the reason why this is useful is, you can get immediate value out of your starter by the turn two, since you'll have a counter blast. You can search and potentially hit a new Asha off of your deck or your backup grade three, which in this case is going to be Inus. If you have a stride fodder in hand, you can reveal the Inus and then search for Asha and then filter your hand and thus secure your ride. Or because Inus is a combo piece, you can also just search for her after you've already hit your Asha and your set up for your stride turn because Inus is not a bad thing to call down. Not only that, but this card goes in the soul, and you happen to need to use your soul for a couple of your skills. So, basically, if you don't have Kyra at this point, you're looking to build this deck, go grab one, because the card's useful. And then, moving on to the grade 3s, let's just start with one of the big backbreakers of the deck in terms of your wallet, and that is Renoclus of Phantasmic Blue Asha. Or Blusha, as I'm going to call her now. So Blusha has two skills, and they're both very good. The first one is at the beginning of your ride phase, you can choose up to one unit from your drop zone and circles on field other than your vanguard. Return them to the bottom of the deck, and if you do, you draw a card, and you can call up to one card from your hand to rear guard circle. So let's talk about this first. You can cycle back anything. So this includes normal units, trigger units, and locked units. Her ability targets your circles except your vanguard, it doesn't target units itself, so yeah, if your opponents manage to get you under a triangle lock, you can use blue shot to get one of those cards out of dodge and free up the circle. It's not a complete anti-lock, but it's still something you can do if you're up against, say, Glendios or Chaos Manage to completely lock you down with Molepsons, Deluge, and such forth. So, that's a thing. Being able to reload two combo pieces into your deck is also a nice thing to have. Reloading triggers is good, and when you combine this with another card, you can load even more. Not only that, but she can also put cards into play, and then you can call another copy out and trigger your blooms and get your engine rolling. This is very good too, because there will be cases where you have like a full board of the unit with the same name, but you can't really do anything else because they're all in play. Like, you can't bloom them, so what do you do? You just put one to the bottom of your deck, along with a card from Drop Zone, and then you just call it out with the, your stride break and there all of them bloom just like that so it's just a neat little thing you can do and then her stride break skill is kind of us one when you stride search your deck for any normal unit with a bloom ability and call to rear guard and if you happen to have two or more units of the same name as that unit including itself you counter charge one and soul charge one so this is potentially free and it also refunds you with an extra soul which is useful for your soul blast skills 
Yeah, it's a straight upgrade from Renoclus to Searing Heart Asha. You don't need that card anymore. In fact, if you're watching this video and you still have your Searing Hearts, get rid of them. Trust me, the card's going to be in your trade binder before long. So, while the card still has value, offload it. And, but why not run 8 Ashas? Because you don't need it. Blue Asha is your best Vanguard, and Red Asha, as I'm calling her, it just doesn't have any value on Vanguard. And she has no use as a rear guard because she does nothing on rear guard. Whereas your good old faithful here, Inus, makes a fantastic backup vanguard because of her really good rear guard skill. At the end of the turn, after she's been bloomed, which is choose up the five Inus, and they all gain her new skill, you can bot deck this card, look at the top five cards of your deck, and add one bloom unit from among them to your hand. Yeah, like, I've talked about Inus before in the past and how she has the ability to just tutor many things, and your options have expanded greatly since set 6 when this card came out, so... Yeah, and her on-ride is kind of a one soul best one. Look at the top 5 cards for a bloom unit at your hand. Unfortunately, this doesn't have bloom, so you can't hit her off of that, but that's fine. Many of your rear guards just require to have a bloom vanguard, so even if you ride this thing early game, you can still at least do some stuff. Obviously, riding her is bad, but we're at the point in Vanguard now where your grade 3s need to be doing something valuable on rear guard, unless their Vanguard skill is just important to have, i.e. because of the name. And this deck doesn't rely on having Renoclus Vanguard as much as, say, Thabas does, where you need to be running 7 Thabas. You don't need to be running 8, eight Oshas in this deck because the number of Renoclus oriented units is very minimal here. So just trust me on this one, get the Inus, you can tutor her off of this, and you can use her with some other cards in this deck to get some more value off of her. And then moving on to the grade 2, so the new grade 2 from this set is Coming Together Maiden Kella. It's a retrain of the 10k vanilla from the first trial deck, and her skills are Continuous Rearguard Circle. If you happen to have a Renoculus Vanguard or a Vanguard with a Bloom ability, she gets plus 1000 power and resist at all times. Fantastic! This means if you say how to ride one of these things, call another one down, this is a 10k beat stick that can swing at your opponent's 10k vanguard without a problem. Not only that, but it has resist, so your opponent can't pop it in retaliation. And because she's 6k, you can throw something like, I don't know, a perfect guard behind her and swing for 16 versus your opponent's 11k vanguard and still hit for numbers. And then another skill is, once per turn, bloom, when another copy of herself comes to play, the one already in play gets power plus 10,000 and the boost ability, so... Yeah, this is a 40k, or rather, if both of these things bloom, this is a 40k line with resist. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's quite a bit to deal with, especially when you can't griffin or head around it. Uh, yeah, not much else to say, like, you run four of this thing, and uh, as far as triple R's go, this won't be that bad either. Like, she's looking to be $10, which is actually quite fine. It's just blue shit that's going to be a problem at 30 to 40 Then, after this... You want to at least run one more playset of grade twos that can get the boost ability, of which the deck has a couple cards of. You've got Anelma, you've got Charles. In set, there's a new grade two that gives your entire column 4k power, and if you have a face-up card in your G-Zone, the boost ability. But uh, right now, I am going with something that I've seen off of the OCG, and that is Green Shot Elf. Remember this thing from G-Set 6? Yeah, she's back because her bloom ability is the most flexible of the bunch. And especially when you combo with another card in this deck, as as opposed to, say, a Nelma, which only gives 3 units plus 2k and only she gets the boost ability, or Char, which gives 1 unit 4k and that unit gets the boost ability, if you happen to call this down with this in play, you get more buffs and everything that is already in play gets the boost. Like, say you happen to have... Uh, let's go with this play. So you call this down, and you call Thuria down, copying her name. These two get power plus 2,000 in the boost. Then if you use your new stride break skill to call another one down, these two will also these two will get another 2k in a boost. And if you call another thing down, then... No, my notes. These three get power plus 2k in a boost. And then if you call this down, all three of these things... All four of these things get power plus 4, 2k in a boost twice. Whereas... You get, I think it's less power overall, unless you're stacking them all on one thing with 
what's her face, Charles. Like, Charles' main advantage is the fact that she can potentially field you extra cards to the board early game, but because Charles can only call the open rearguard circle, it's just inherently bad. Like, I thought Charles was going to be really good with this new stuff, but then I switched to Green Shot Elf, and I honestly think this card is just better. You can also do some neat multi attacks with her that we will be discussing in a bit. But if you don't want to run Green Shot Elf, you want to try the other options, then I guess you can do that too. But, like, I think this is probably the stronger of the bunch. And then, as I kind of alluded to, 3 Thuria is the last grade too. I thought Thuria was not going to be needed with the new stuff because it's not a Loom unit, so you can't tutor with Lucia. And what was the other reason why? I just, oh, yeah, you couldn't get it back with the new Perfect Guard, but I don't play the new Perfect Guard anymore because it's not good. And yes, you have to hard draw into this thing, but you're going to be thinning out your deck through some of your skills, and that draw pack is mitigated by what Thuria can do. So, just a quick refresh of how Thuria works. Her first skill is when you place it on Rear Guard Circle and you have a Renonculus Vanguard, you choose one of your units. Before she comes down while doing this, you, that, she becomes the name of that chosen unit. So, if you already have a Green Shot Elf in play, this is treated as a Green Shot Elf. And at the beginning of your main phase, you choose a card with the same name as this unit, so Thuria or whatever she's copying, you bot deck it. And if you have a Renoculus Vanguard, you return it to hand. So this is one of the few cards in this deck that does require to have a Renoculus Vanguard. But that's fine. So let's talk about what you can do with Thuria in this deck. Because there's some neat little things here. So as I kind of alluded to, you can use you can put a green shot of Elf in the play, call a Thuria down, and then you don't have to call more green shots out of the deck. You can use them you can save them in deck for your great for Nelhamenia skill and get more value off of them. But another thing I've noticed is that because many of these new Bloom cards only have a once per turn Bloom, it's very difficult for you to get maximum value off of them. Like, say you do this, and then you do this, then you do this, and you do this. These will Bloom, but this one will not. And as a result, you have a 40 line here, but you only have a 30 line here. If you go 30 down here, now this becomes a 40 line. And that's an extra, that's two more stages of guarding for your opponent to deal with. Not only that, but... You can combine Thuria with Blucia's skill to call a card from hand to field during the beginning of your ride phase, and you can get more cards in. So imagine this scenario. Say you're one of your green shot elves got retired, but you happen to have one more on the board, and um, yeah, so we'll put, let's say this is the drop zone, and you have these green shot elves in play because you used Vilhelmina before. So you'll use Blucia's skill in order to put one of them to the bomb, yeah, you put this one to the bottom of the deck, you put this one to the bottom, no wait, you keep the one in your drop zone at the bottom of, in your drop zone, so let's just assume this is our drop zone, yeah, okay, I know what I'm trying to get at here, so, this is your setup, I just have to find Blusha here, there we go, so, you use Blusha's skill to return this to the bottom of the deck, and this to the bottom of the deck, and you call this down from your hand, trigger their blooms, and then you use... Blucia skill to call something off a of stride and blah 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 blah. Then at the beginning of your ride phase, you use Thuria skill to return this green shot out that's still in your drop zone to the bottom of your deck and you bounce it to the hand. And just like that, you've put three cards back into your deck as opposed to just only two. This is really useful for when you're going into longer games and you need to be able to just reload more things, especially if you are running out of targets for Valhalmenia, which can happen, but you don't want to go into Inverno to reload them back. Uh, what else can I really say about three other than like we know what you can do with this card at this point because you know, there's been many exploits with this thing. Obviously, Primavera is still really strong with this thing, and anything that has the ability to boost. And guess what? We happen to have this a Green Shot Elf. So yeah, not much else I can really say about her. Just I'm only running three because you need to be running at least eight Grade Threes to ensure that Kyra, yeah, Broccoli and Musty Tier Kyra, Kyra will uh, hit something. And, uh, yeah, so let's move on to the grade one. So, for the perfect guards, we have Liliga from G Set 6. So, there's a new perfect guard in this set that when another copy of itself appears on Guardian Circle while it is in the drop zone, you can bind itself to add one bloom unit from your drop zone to your hand. In theory, you, this perfect guard can get back another copy of the perfect guard because it has the bloom ability, but the game has to go on really long and you need to have three perfect guards in circulation, two in the drop zone and one in your hand in order to get this kind of effect off. Sure, you can use this perfect guard to get back your Bloom Grade 2, your Bloom Grade 1, Inez, your Azu starter if you, with the Bloom ability if you choose to run that, but 
That requires quite a bit, and that perfect guard can only be used on Renoclus Vanguards, and since I'm not playing 8 Oshas, that means if I ride anything other than Blusha, this perfect guard is going to be dead. So instead, we're running this card because it's something that you can tutor out with Blusha, and if you already have one in play, you can kind of bust one and bounce them to your hand, which is pretty good, especially given that Lieta allows you to just call multiple of these out if you rode one. Say so you happen to have, oh, I don't know, the, yeah, you have two counter blasts because you got, you got crit sacked or something like that. You can use the Etta, call two of these out, counter blast one, bounce them in the hand, and look at that. You now have two perfect guards, and you can just soul blast this one out and do other things with it. Or you can, as I kind of alluded to, you can ride a Kella, you can call a Kella, and you can throw this perfect guard, and now you're swinging for 16, and yeah, so you're at 16. And then you got the stride turn, so you just ride Blusha, you stride, you use your skill, kind of us one, call your perfect guard out. Because you happen to have two units of the same name, you counter charge one, soul charge one, then use this card skill to kind of us one, bounce them back to your hand, and look at that. You now have two perfect guards out, and uh, you were able to make use of an early game perfect guard when otherwise you don't really want to see them until you're a grade three turn and above that. So, just some things you can do with the Liga that I just found to be rather useful. Then, four Stride Fodders, four Diane. If you don't remember what she is, just like Kella, when you have a Bernoclus or Bloom Vanguard, she gets Power Plus 1000 and the Resist ability continuously. And then when another copy of herself is put in the play, GB1 on Bloom, you this card gets Power Plus 10,000, and at the end of the turn, you can Soul Blast one and return her to the hand. I don't think, yeah, you, know, you don't need a Bernoclus Vanguard for that part of the skill, so. Yeah, it's just a big beefy attacker with resist that will be 36,000 when you bloom it, which is pretty nice. Although, much like Kella, she has that once per turn restriction, so you'll need to at least have a Thuria in order to call one of these things down and trigger her bloom while also keeping multiple copies in deck for your on attack blooms. Granted, you can also, let's see, if you're going to Primavera, you can also just swing, kind of last three, look. Put normal four, five normal units from the drop zone to the top of the deck, discard one, and then just call out one of each copy. Bam, 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 bloom, bloom, and there you go. You have some pretty spicy numbers. And then rounding up the great ones, two copies of, I forget her name, but it's Leslie. So Leslie is from the new set as well, and she has two skills. First one is once per turn, bloom, soul charge one. It's not GB lock, which is pretty neat and you do use some soul, particularly for her skill, and that's something just to keep in the back of your mind. And then her other skill is Soul Blast to retire this card. After she boosts a unit with the blue ability, you can pay the cost. If you do, you search your deck for a copy of that card and call it to Berry Guard Circle and shop your deck. So it's basically a Negro Bone and What's the other one? Uh, Harry has one too, but it's sort of like Negrobone where you meet the condition and you get an extra attack. Although this one sacks itself in order to call a thing. But uh, you can still do some neat stuff with it. Like you can say do Green Shot Elf here. You can swing with this. After you do that, Soul Blast 2, sack this thing, clone the Green Shot Elf, and then you get an extra attack. Remember, when you call a bloom unit on top of a bloom unit, the first one will still bloom. So you, if you have this full column that's ready to go, you can just swing with this line, Soul Blast to sack this, call this, trigger her bloom, swing, and go from there. Or if you happen to have two of these things in play because you're a god, you can do this. You can swing, Soul Blast to sack, call, swing, Soul Blast to sack, clone, bloom, bloom. This thing gets power plus 4,000. Look at that, you're swinging for 13, and I don't know, you could like potentially pass, I don't know. You can do some more stuff with that. You can also do this with Inus, which is a neat thing to keep in the back of your mind too. Sure, they're not very big multi-attacks, but they're still multi-attacks, and one of your strides has a really good GB4 that synergizes with these. And yeah, it's just a really okay card. If you draw it early the game, you can always just throw it down, use it as a booster, and... Clone one, get your counter charge, soul charge, and just go from there. Just bear in mind though that these are soul blast twos, and you can run out of soul very fast, which is kind of important for one of your G guards. Then for the triggers, eight crits featuring four of the Asha crit. This is getting a special reprint in set, 
So it shouldn't be that pricey to get. I don't think Miles was ever really that expensive though. It's not like Hard Thump Worker. Four of the second Musketeer crit. Musketeers get two crits in the set. One is a normal one. This is not a normal one. Normally. <laughs> uh, so this crit has the skill of on Guardian Circle, Rear Guard, or Drop Zone, it is treated as a normal unit. Which is important because Musketeers and some Bloom cards require you to put normal units to the bottom of your deck in order to get them back into the deck. And this gets around that. So you can Vernal back crit triggers thanks to these guys, and that's kind of nice to have. Then, four draw triggers, because we're going to be doing a lot of on attack clones, you just want to be able to draw on the draw triggers and pass their effects on. Stands were not as useful in this deck as I thought they would be. I mean, you can still cheese people with Lizbeth, but I, I don't know, I just feel like she's not as needed as she was before. And then lastly, four of the Musketeer heal trigger, it's the new kind of heal trigger you get, so you... When you discard it for a G-Guardian, you bind it plus another heal trigger from your drop zone to either counter charge one and soul charge one, and that's always a nice thing to have because you can run out of counter blast or soul fairly quickly if you aren't managing your stuff properly. So let's move on to what's going to like make you cry even more than your main deck, and that's your D-Zone. Three copies of the Four Seasons Flower Princess Velhaminia, or something along those lines. I forget the actual name, but... This is the boss monster of the four season strides, if you never noticed that. Neonectar has a stride for each season, and this is all four of them now. So Velhamenia has two skills, which is on attack, counter bus one, G flip, search your deck for up to two normal units with the blue ability that have the same name, and call them to separate rows. So it's just like Mist Phantasm Pirate King Night Rose, except your counter blast is one less, and she flips anything. Plus, she has a secondary ability, which is at Generation Break 4, all of your rear guards in the front row get power plus 5,000 inner crit. So, this line now becomes 45 crit 2. Yeah, one of the issues I always had with Bloom in the past was powering up and powering up and powering up, but for what? Just to deal your opponent 1 damage, maybe 2? That was why I liked the Sunflower build for so long, was because you you were getting big rear guards that also did something if they hit. Belhem Mania basically rewards you for powering up your rear guards to be really big because now they're really big and they're going to deal extra damage to your opponent. Your opponent has to block all these rear guard swings, otherwise you're just going to kill them. And this is where cards like Leslie come in because now at Generation Break 4, you can say you do this setup. You can swing, soul blast 2, clone, swing, soul blast 2, clone, swing. And all these attacks have an additional power plus 5,000 plus their blooms and a crit each. And then you have your Valhamania swing, Candle Blast 1, and then call your 45k line with a crit. And you just put a ton of pressure on your opponent. Granted, they could do something with this with their G-Guards, but uh, short of them doing something to this, you still get your clone off because just like with Negrobone, you just have to boost to meet the condition of this. So if, say, you do this and your opponent griffins this, you still get the Soul Blast 2, call us out, and continue along with your plays. Yeah, Bellamini is insane, and you need to be playing three of her, which really sucks that she ends up being an $80 card. And not much I, I can really say. Like, New Nectar finally has the ability to get multi-attacks and in-battle phase calls, which is something the clan's kind of been needing. Then, for the backup strides, or rather, just the utility strides. Two copies of Lieta. Talked about this card before. So, kind of us one flip a copy of herself and choose up the one card from your hand, put them into the soul. She gains the names of all of your cards in the soul. So, what you ride, she now becomes. And then you call cards from your deck with the same name as herself, equal to the number of face up cards in your G zone, plus one. So, say you went into Valhamenia and your opponent blew up your board, and then you flip. Then you get to call one, two, three, four cards out. And I believe her skill is, yeah, if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more. So basically, Generation Break 3, choose three of your cards after you call, and they get power plus 3,000 until end of turn. So, the it is just a really good board recovery, or if your hand just doesn't allow you to really do a whole lot, and you ended up writing some interesting card choices. Uh, let's, let's see, you wrote this, and oh, I don't know. Where's my great twos at? There we go. Say you wrote this and this. You can just kind of us one flip, and then you can call two Kellas out if you need to just establish a board of attackers with resist. Or if you're up against Oracle Think Tank and you need PG's Bash, you can just 
call out two PGs, cannabis one, bounce in the hand. The Lieta has got some really good synergy in here. And if you aren't using Valhaminia, then chances are you're going to Lieta and then you can just Valhaminia the following turn. And then after that, you'll want at least one Inverno. Her ability to reload five cards in the deck is really useful, especially after you've used Valhaminia once or twice. She'll probably start running out of targets, so you can just put four cards back in plus one extra card, and there you go, Valhaminia is going to be live again. Not to mention, you need things to flip in. Flipping Inverno isn't the worst thing. I am running two copies just in case it comes up. Grind matchups like Link Joker do exist, after all. At least one copy of Primavera. She still has a place in this deck. Not as much as before, but if your opponent pushes you to 5 damage really early and you have the setup for it, you might just be able to kill the opponent right then and there because it is multiple attacks during the battle phase and you happen to have some blue units to get really big really fast. So, yeah, it, it's basically the same reasoning as to why the Overlord players are running 3 copies of the Ace. If they get pushed to 4 damage early, they can counter blast 4 and flip twice and get the Ace online and just immediately do restanding. So, this is just some... It's basically a Valhamenia, but to a better and also lesser extent. And then after that, you basically have options in your G zone. You have Seabreeze and then two Flex Spots. So you can run many things in here. Uh, I've seen the GB8, which I don't have on me right now, but pretend this is a GB8 and you have like one more card. You can either make another Primavera, a third Inverno, or if you somehow manage to get one of these, a Zeroth Dragon of Death Garden Zoa. Who, if we don't remember, is an ultimate stride, so you have to have three face up in the G zone, and you have to discard a copy of your named Vanguard in order to stride this thing. And at the end of the turn, if this thing returns to the G zone, you banish your entire extra deck. And therefore, you're pretty much done with this deck because it's mostly GB locked. But uh, yeah, Zoa, for all of this, gives you the ability of Counter Blast 2. When placed on Vanguard, you draw a card, call a card from hand to Rearguard Circle, its power becomes 99,999. It becomes unaffected by all card effects, except the new skill of when its attack hits and deals a damage to your opponent's vanguard, you automatically win the game. Zoa is a card that you're not going to be going into that often should you choose to one run it, but he is an option to have, and he, him just simply existing will force your opponent to prioritize keeping perfect guards in hand because they might not know if you have the Zoa or not, and if you see that they've gone through all their perfect guards, you can just drop this thing and swing with a 99-99-9 attacker and just kill them. And no 6 damage heal is going to get you out of that. So, he's not as like guaranteed of a power play as, say, Stark or Dust is, but he's just still something that's there. And all three green clans can make use of Zoa if you're able to get a hold of him. But granted, Zoa's going to be like $80 to $100, so... Like, it's not the end of the world if you can't get him. It's just like, if you're going to, like, I don't know, an ARG or BWC, expect to see Zoa in any Neo Nectar, Mega Colony, or Great Nature decks you come across, because those people will, in fact, be playing Zoa. And then that's it for the G Zone for Strides, and for the G Guards, two copies of Bomb Protecting Musketeer and Taro. And Taro is back, and uh, he's quite good. So his first skill, or rather, his skill is simple. When placed on Guard Circle, you can Soul Blast 1, and if you do, he gets Shield plus 5,000. However, if you happen to have one or less Rear Guards, or four or more Rear Guards, he gets an additional plus 15,000 Shield. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 15 Shield that can get a potential 20,000 Shield on top of that. A 35,000 Shield. That should put your Vanguard up to 46,000, which is enough to no pass unboosted strides, two pass 36,000 strides, and if you throw a 10k down, you can two pass 41k strides. Like, gear next basically can't hit you unless you, unless they just sack, yeah, because the first gear next swing can't hit you, and then the second gear next swing is gonna be for 36,000, oh wait, no, gear next second swing can beat you through a two pass, my bad, but you can just throw a 5k shield down and gear next can't touch you, that's pretty cool. Like. Uh, Neos have always appreciated having access to a really big G guard for really big Vanguard swings, and Antero is one of the best ones out there because he is a card that rewards you for doing well by having a full board, or if you're super behind by having no board. The only time that Antero is awful is you happen to have two or three rear guards in play. That's it. 
but given that most of your rear guards in this format will have resist, it's kind of difficult for your opponent to get to that position where Antero will not get you max value. But if Antero's not going to get you max value, that's where the other G guards come in. So let's list them off, shall we? One copy of Costarina, the Fighters Collection G guard, who is counter plus one, flip a G guardian. Call a card from hand to rear guard, she gets a shield plus 5,000. Then if you have two or more units of the same name as that card, just like Lucia, so you can just simply do a matter of, you already have a green shot elf in play, you counter plus one, call a green shot elf down, and you meet her condition, which is an additional shield plus 10,000, so she becomes a 30 shield. Yep, not much else to say. One rain breath dragon, calls a card from hand to rear guard circle, it gets resist, and he gets shield plus 5,000, so it's an easy to pull off 20 shield. And then one G Guardian of your choice. Uh, what you run in here is preferable. Like if you want to run an Algleam clone, you can run Algleam or Raklank. You can also run from set 12. I forget what his name is, but he is that rare G Guardian where when he returns to the G zone, you can choose up to. I, be I believe it's you choose two normal units with the same name for your drop zone, bot deck them. If you do, you flip that card down. It's a reusable G unit, and now that we have crit triggers that have the ability to be treated as normal monsters, you can just cycle two crits back into your deck and flip your G Guardian down and just use it again, which is actually kind of cool. So, yeah, that is pretty much the breakdown of the new stuff in it and what you need to be mindful of. So, the cards from this set that I don't talk about in here are just simply not worth your time. You can experiment with them and... I did with a couple of the grade twos, but the, the backup bloom grade three is not good. Inus is better. The other guy that gets boost is not good. The ones we have are better. I haven't used that one that draws cards, but this format doesn't allow you to really use it. It would be good if it was a different format, or rather if that card would have been amazing if it came out in set 12 format, but not this current format where we need to be able to just be able to do things with cost green with uh, the Lamini. Like the important thing about your grade twos is with the exception of Theria, you want your grade twos to have the ability to get boost so that you can just call a column out and attack with it. Like your main columns are gonna be two copies of Kella, two copies of Greenshot Elf, or two copies of Diane. And there you have it. Um, not much also I can really say like this deck is really strong. Uh, it's placing in the meta is an interesting one because it's not better than Thava's Overlord Chaos or Gridora, but it's definitely a lot stronger than other decks compared to it. And I'd say it's low end tier one and something you just gotta be mindful of. Bushiro did a really good job in patching up New Nectar's issues and they've also managed to do a really good job of making the deck more accessible to newcomers. Because a thing that was always something I've noticed is that people complained about how complicated Bloom seemed as a deck because, oh, I gotta keep track of all these numbers and all this and this and this. But now that we have Bloom units that just have very simple once per turn Bloom skills, it's a lot more difficult to lose track of what you're doing. Sure, these units have a finite limit of how powerful they can get. However, the short burst of power they get, I think just far outweighs the cons of not being able to power up and power up and power up and power up like these cards can, provide you can keep Blooming. So, yeah. We have an easier to play Bloom deck that can hit high power, it's resistant to control, and uh, it's a waifu deck, but yeah, basically all the cards in this deck are pretty much what you want to be aiming for as a priority. And then if you haven't already gotten them, the cards that I listed in the G zone, the GB8, Lieta, Cost Arena, and Prima Fair, and then some copies of Inverno. I tried Dream Spinning Asha and Glorious Boom for a very long time, but to be fair, they're just not good in here. You can cut them out and trust me, you're not going to miss them. Which is kind of a shame because I thought those cards were going to be Neo Nectar forever, but nope. Uh, they are not. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long and detailed explanation of what the new cards do. As for when the actual deck profile of real physical cards come, uh, expect that midway through February. Until then, though, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Blue Story 99 jacking up.